वाहेगुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह इन द लास्ट मैरिज वीडियो वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट इन मोस्ट मैरिजेस देयर इज अ फेयर अमाउंट ऑफ कर्मा दैट हैज टू बी पेड इन द मैरिज एंड दैट्स व्हाई इट्स कॉल्ड ग्रिस्ट आश्रम यू नो एन आश्रम इज अ प्लेस व्हेयर समवन comes to work on themselves spiritually to practice their upaya their method of spiritual discipline so when marriage is approached from a spiritual viewpoint then we understand that we've brought karma into the marriage and that there's new karma being created in the marriage and that we have to face that uh with as much grace as possible and deal with it and work through it each of us has three kinds of karma there's the karma from previous incarnations that's karma that our soul brings with us into the next incarnation it still has to be paid and you know 8.4 million incarnations out of which 84,000 of those are human incarnations. 84,000 human incarnations. There's a lot to work through. But in this incarnation, if you're getting married or you're married, you have to understand that you're going to bring your past karma from previous incarnations into the marriage with you. It's your karma, but it comes into the marriage. You're also going to bring with you any karma that you've incurred in this lifetime before you got married. So, karma earned up to that point is also going to come into the marriage. And then there's a third karma. The third karma is the karma of the the family. It's what we call the blood karma, the DNA. And that karma actually comes through the bloodline. from the family itself so three kinds of karma karma from past incarnations karma we've incurred in this incarnation up till now and karma that comes through the bloodline the dna karma now understand that you're coming into the marriage with the karma uh that you have of those three types and your partner is coming into the marriage with also those three types of karma so now we have a a lot of karma <laughs> so just imagine it's like a pot and and all these karmas are being put into the pot your past karma your present karma your family karma her past karma or his past karma family karma a blood karma karma you've incurred in this lifetime all those karmas are put together in that pot now they have to be cooked because the point of being married is to work through it so that you can reach that final stage of merger in the marriage that means we have to forthrightly confront those karmas understand that we're dealing with them and communicate and work through them now in a marriage there is a confusion that comes with just the fact of being married what's that confusion well there may be more than one type of confusion but the type of confusion i'm talking about is the confusion between my karma that belongs to me my spouse's karma and that's her karma to work through and then the karma that we're creating in the marriage because through our actions or or inactions in the marriage through our words all of those things we can create new karma in the marriage and that is a shared karma that's shared between both members so let's take an example suppose you're very prone to anger you uh, heat up quickly uh you know you you get you feel it come up in you you know and you you react quickly to the things that your spouse says and of course everybody knows that families and that includes blood families and marriages uh know how to push each other's buttons 
So there's this, we've all practiced pushing buttons as children because when you're a child, the way you get what you want is by pushing your parents' buttons. So we learn exactly where our mom's buttons are and where our dad's buttons are and how to push them. That art of uh, applying emotional pressure or, you know, uh, coercion, coercion in some way uh, has been developed and honed during childhood. So when you come into a marriage, you learn pretty quickly where your buttons are and where your spouse's buttons are and how to push them. And that's the beginning of the push and pull, the entanglement that is about working through the karma in the marriage. So there has to be a commitment from both members of this partnership that there's a goal, that the marriage has a point. If it's Gurist Ashram, and you know, Gurbani says that even the gods and goddesses, the devas and devis are jealous of the, of the marriage of the Gurist Ashram. Why? Because it's the most difficult ashram of all. It's more difficult than just being in satsangat and chanting God's name. It is a place where the karmas get cooked and worked through. The karma gets paid by Guru's grace. And then there comes another phase of the marriage when the karma is resolved. And yes, it is possible to work through the karma if one follows the lavan. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the lavan and the whole point of being married. Of being married. So uh, then, what, in the video after that, we're going to talk about some practical techniques for staying married, uh, staying graceful in marriage. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to reach the end goal of marriage.